2018 National Signing Day is here. It's time to chat with UNA head football coach Chris Willis about the first Division I football signing class in UNA history. And Coach, uh, new recruiting rules, a new era of UNA football before we really dive into this signing class. Just what was this whole experience like putting this group together? Well, it was a little different. Uh, you know, me and uh, Mr. Linder, we joked about this the other day. Uh, you know, in the world of Division II, you work off 36 scholarships. There's no limit on the roster. There's no limit on how many you can sign on signing day. I think in years past, I think last year we signed maybe 41. It was 38 or 41. I think Coach Wallace's first year in 2012 was around 45. I mean, uh, but we can't do that in Division One. You can only sign 30. That's the you know FCS rules. And so, you know, we joke about it. Me and Mr. Leonard did the other night how we only had 36 scholarships, but we were just trying to sign everybody we could off 36 scholarships. Well, now we've got 57 scholarships. And it hasn't been as easy. I, you know, I'll be the first to admit it. It's, you know, we're, we're going through uncharted territory here. And, uh, you know, you look at the fact that, you know, we do have the city. And that's the one thing when people get here, they go, wow, man, I, I didn't know this was here. It was like nobody's been up here before, even from two hours down the road. And the city itself, the tradition, uh, they like our coaching staff. Our visits went really well. And so at the end of the day, some of the ones we lost, it was just due to the transition um, going through that. And we joked about how now we got 57, but it's a little bit harder to sign. And, uh, but you gotta be a little bit more, you gotta be, uh, you gotta go through it a little bit harder and tougher as far as your staff on evaluating these guys, because we just can't take to take. Uh, once you put them to a dollar amount, whether it's a full or half or whatever it may be, that counts. And so, you know, if you're gonna select 30, you need to select 30 that moving forward. You know, in the old days, you might could, Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll throw a $2,000 scholarship or a $1,500 scholarship over that way, and then maybe one day he'll play. Um, but these guys, you're counting on, if they don't play as a freshman, you're definitely counting on to play down the road. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to build uh, some kind of foundation. You take last year's signing class, which we thought was really well, you mix it in with this group, and you know, you just keep continuing. It's not about just next football season, it's for the years to come. And, and I feel like we've done that. Our coaches, we've expanded. I know it's a lot more Alabama kids than it is out of state. I mean, we don't have to go far. I, it's amazing. Alabama's just got a lot of good high school football. And Georgia does and, and, and Florida. Just We don't have to go far. And in years past, we did a lot of phone recruiting due to budget and stuff. And so we were able to get out a little bit further this year. And uh, we've expanded it. And uh, our coaches worked really hard to put this group together. And um, you know, there's always some guys that we wish we would have gotten. You know, there's not a, there's a lot of schools today that's going to be, a, you know, I don't know whether they'll admit that or not, but maybe they'll say that. And every every coach should think they've got a great signing class, and we do. We like everybody we got, and whether they redshirt or not, we don't know. I don't make those decisions until we get into fall camp. There may be a Christian Taylor in this group, and. Uh, you know, that's something we'll see once we report. This was a class coach that really first started coming together in December in the early signing period. You signed two defensive backs early on. Uh, you lose some great defensive backs from last year's team. So uh, the two that you signed in the early period, are they two that you expect to come in and contribute right away? No doubt. You know, when you, br when you bring in a transfer, junior college or four-year transfer, you expect them to play right away. Uh, we don't have time to redshirt those guys. So if they don't play right away, then I guess in some ways uh, you could say it's a disappointment in recruitment. Uh, but Jonathan Fletcher is, I think, a five-time state champion from Tanner who won multiple championships in basketball and football. And uh, was, you know, I'd be honest with you, outside of his academics, probably would have went to a bigger school out of high school. And uh, we're very fortunate to be able to, you know, we've been recruiting for quite some time and we've built a relationship with him. And he made his grades and was able to get Division One qualified. And uh, to get him, I think, is a blessing. And, He's a heck of a player. And then David Swins, a uh, safety we'd been recruiting also for quite some time. We tried to sign him last year. And so we look at one guy possibly going in to you know, replace Dorsey, the other guy going in to place Maurice. And so you know, one thing we've always done a good job here is find good secondary players and being very strong at defending the pass. And you know, uh, you know that, was, that was one thing we wanted to address right out of the gate. Now, I know the question is, you know, what about quarterback play and where's all that going to end up? We're, we're still leaving room left. If you notice at the end of the day, we're going to probably sign on anywhere from 21 to 23 guys. And so we're going to have six, seven spots left in the off season to still continue to recruit some other spots to add on. 21 high school signees on signing day, coach. Uh, any positions that you guys were targeting? What can you tell us about this group of freshmen coming in? Well, we were targeting a little bit of everything. We wanted to get out, we need to get us some tight ends and, um, and, and build something there. And we feel like we've got two that we, we put on this group. We, uh, the D-line, I mean, we, 
Uh, you know, so it's funny how sometimes the strongest side of the ball might have been your defense, but you always seem to still keep recruiting at that side of the ball. But it's hard to turn down good players if you got a chance to get them. I feel like we targeted everything. I mean, we signed a high school quarterback. I really believe we needed to get a young guy in the system and get him going. I think back of the Luke Wingo, Jacob Tucker era and how you had two high school kids. And that was the plan there. Now, we still may sign another high school kid. This is not complete. You know, that we're still working on some things. And so, uh, you know, it's just really at the end of the day, it was just targeting all positions. And, um, you know, running back, we, we noticed we signed two high school kids there to go along with C.J. Sturdivant, who we signed last year. You know, C.J. went through a knee problem, so we don't know how well that recovery is going to be. But, you know, I just at the end of the day, we want to make sure we covered all positions in, in some way. And, and like I said, we've got enough room to sign six, seven guys this summer, and we will. We'll, we'll fill the entire third. UNA gearing up for their first season of Division I football in 2018. Be sure to visit RoarLines.com to keep up with all things UNA football.